Well, I'm Stephen Henry, Chairman of Board of Commissioner Tusa County, and I'm here today with our clerk, Melissa Hanna. How are you today, Melissa? I'm good. How are you? I'm doing well. So tell me how you feel about what was done this morning in our special call meeting, the incentive program to get vaccinated. I think it was a very positive thing. I think it's important to encourage people to get the vaccine so that we can hopefully see the other side of this and protect our families and our children in the community. And I think that sometimes some people just need that little extra push to get them to go and get the vaccine. So I think it's a positive thing. However, if you still don't want the vaccine or you don't want to show your card that you were vaccinated, you can do that as well. It's still a choice. So I think it was very positive. Well, I hope most people take it that way. You know, we wanted it to be a positive thing. We wanted to offer a choice, as you said, but we don't want to mandate. The last thing we want to do is mandate people to have to do something. I don't think that's government's place. Uh, I know a lot of people are complaining about the costs, uh, $500 per employee, but if they would listen to our meeting, the average cost for a COVID patient that doesn't go into ICU is seventeen to $20,000 per patient. Uh, you know, on top of that, it's just about saving lives. I think it's our job to do the best we can to save as many lives as possible. And I truly believe that's what the vaccine is doing right now. I agree. I'm tired of every day that you hear that there's someone else who's lost a family member or someone that is sick or, I mean, yeah, something we've got to make some changes. We do, you know, it's a. Uh, a year ago, when we were fighting this COVID battle, it, it was very frustrating because none of us knew what to do. Uh, we didn't have a solution. We were kind of like fighting a battle with an unloaded gun, you know, having your weapon but no bullets. And but this year, you know, when the vaccine finally came out, when uh, President Trump got the vaccine approved, and then we were able to get it out, uh, I thought, well, we're finally going to get through this. But then it's the battle of the vaccine hesitancy and nobody, everybody hearing false information, which I truly believe is the biggest problem that we face right now is false information about vaccinations. Uh, what I see on a local level is people are not dying if they have the vaccine. Uh, last week, there were 109 people in one hospital, 89.7% of them were non vaccinated. So you would. I just feel like if people knew the truth, they would get vaccinated. But how do you get it out there? I mean, how do we tell people and get them to understand or get them to at least look for the information somewhere besides social media? Mm -hmm. And listen to the professionals who are qualified and certified and have gone to school and done the research and the work or talk to people in the medical field that, you know, talk to your doctor and listen to them. Don't let a video you find on YouTube or what someone says on Facebook make you throw all reason out the window. Um, I don't know why we would stop. If you trusted your doctor before, why don't you trust them now? I agree wholeheartedly. I don't understand. I don't either. And I am so ready to be through COVID. We've lost so many friends and uh, lost some family and I'm just ready to put it behind us. And I. I know one of the things, and I'm sure you've heard as well, is, is uh, they say it's government control, that COVID is government control. And in, in my opinion, and this might sound crazy, uh, if we would just take the vaccine and put COVID behind us, the government has no control. I think the only time government has control is as long as we stay in a health pandemic, as long as we stay in a health emergency. If we could just get past it, I think the control's over. I, I think people are looking at it opposite of what it truly is. Mm -hmm, I agree. And I think last year this time, not saying it was any less of a pandemic, but I think that from what just my own opinion and what I've seen, it I didn't know as many people that were getting COVID and getting quite as sick. Not that there weren't some, but not as many as there are now. So if what happened last year caused us not just here but other places to kind of have to shut down and go through if we continue on this trend with this what's going to happen 
I mean, no one wants to go back to that where you can't see your friends or family or you can't go to a ball game or you can't. The only way that we will be able to continue doing these things and not have to go through that again is if people get vaccinated. I agree. I, I feel wholeheartedly that the vaccine is the answer to get us through. I think, I think um, without divine inspiration or intervention from God, we wouldn't have had the vaccine as quick as we did. And I'm thankful mm -hmm. for it. Now it's up to us to do the responsible thing, in my opinion, and, and take it so we can move on. And I know that. some people say, well, just because you get the vaccine, you can still get COVID. They know people who've still got COVID, but were fully vaccinated which is true, there are breakthrough cases, but you don't really see those people going into the hospital. No. You don't see them taking up an ICU bed. And so I read an article or it was on the news, I don't I think it was channel nine today, how there's like three ICU beds left in Chattanooga area hospitals. So if more people are in the hospital for COVID, what if I go out here and I have an accident and I'm in a car wreck and I need to go to the hospital? I mean, it, it it's just it's just an avalanche. It is. You know, one of my biggest fears, and you know, if anything, I'm guilty of overthinking is what if we have a mass casualty event? Mm -hmm. What if we have a, another fog on the freeway and have a 75 car pileup? You know, the the what ifs when we had a a bus accident yesterday, and thankfully nobody was hurt. Uh, mm -hmm. But we just got to get COVID in the rearview mirror where we can focus on everyday life. And, and yes. get back so, to if some of those people in the hospital were vaccinated, maybe they still got COVID, but they're at home. Yeah, I agree wholeheartedly. So, so the hospital is open. But we'll just keep pushing our message out and hopefully some people listen. I, I hope the incentive we did today will help some of our employees maybe make the decision uh, to at least get information, uh, to at least reach out to a different source to learn what they can and try to make an informed decision for themselves. We don't want to force it on anybody. I no. just ask that they make decisions based on facts and not Facebook, social media, gossip and banter. I completely agree. I think that that's the only way we get through it. Well, Melissa, thank you for taking the time to be with us. You know, a lot of folks don't realize that uh, Melissa Hannon and Candy Fleener are kind of the backbone of the county. Uh, nothing happens that don't happen in the clerk's office. Melissa has been with us a long time and thank you very much for what you do. You're welcome. Thank you for what you do. Right. I can do what I do without the support of a good board and a chairman. So. We definitely have a good board right now. I'm thankful for each one of them. So we'll see you next time. Thank you for taking the time to be with us. Bye. -bye. Bye.